The ballot box is sacred ground in America. That's where we make our voices heard. That's where we decide who leads us. That's where we chart America's future. It's where we fulfill our duty as citizens. <clears throat> it's not complicated. It's called democracy. We believe Americans should decide American elections, period. But Donald Trump will do anything to get reelected, including violating the most basic forms of democracy. It's stunning and it's dangerous because it directly threatens our democracy. This is not hyperbole. It's a fact. No president in American history has ever dared to engage in such unimaginable behavior. With his words and his actions, President Trump has indicted himself by obstructing justice, refusing to comply with the congressional inquiry. He's already convicted himself in full view of the world and the American people. Donald Trump has violated his oath of office, betrayed this nation, and committed impeachable acts. You know, <clears throat> to, to preserve our Constitution, our democracy, our basic integrity, he should be impeached. That's not only because of what he's done. To answer whether he has committed acts of sufficient to warrant impeachment is obvious. We see it in Trump's own words. We see it in the text from State Department officials that have been made public. We see it in his pulling much of the United States government into his corrupt schemes, individuals within the government, his appointees. But we have to remember that impeachment isn't only, isn't only about what the president has done. It's about the threat the president poses to the nation if allowed to remain in office. One thing about this president is absolutely clear, and I don't think anyone can contradict this. He has seen no limits to his power, regardless of what the Constitution says. He believes the entire United States government can be corrupted into furthering his personal political needs. He's even willing to hold Congress and congressionally appropriated aid to a foreign nation hostage to his personal political demands. He believes if he does something it's legal, period. And perhaps most importantly, he believes there is nothing we can do about it. He believes he can and will get away with anything he does. We all laughed when he said he could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot someone and get away with it. It's no joke. He's shooting holes in the Constitution. And we can not let him get away with it. Folks, we should have no illusions. We have, should have no illusions. This is the president who has decided that this nation doesn't have the tools or the power or the political will to stop him from doing whatever he wants. Trump isn't just testing us. He's laughing at us. He has no sense of decency. He doesn't care about the law. He doesn't believe that people and nations that follow the rules are anything other than suckers or fools or losers. We have to prove him wrong. We have to demonstrate that our Constitution, our government, our elected officials, including Republicans, are up to this moment. And this is especially a dangerous moment for this nation because we know the pressure on Trump is only going to increase. And with that pressure increases, he's only going to grow more volatile, more erratic, more self-serving, and more destructive. He has another year in office. Yeah. 
No, I'm serious. Think about that. Think about that. He'll stop at nothing to save himself. No individual, no institution, nothing, nothing that we've held sacred in this nation more than 200 years will be safe. If Donald Trump was just a reality TV star, it wouldn't matter. But he's responsible for the largest economy in the world. He's commander in chief of the most powerful military in the history of the world. And he's supposed to be a leader of the free world. Yet, with the free world under threat of advancing authoritarianism, Donald Trump has completely abdicated America's global leadership and embraced those autocrats. At a time when Ch China is engaged in human rights abuses that are staggering, cause for enormous concern, more than 100 Uyghur Muslims are imprisoned in so-called re-education re camps in the West. In Hong Kong, protesters are increasingly being met with violent repression as they demand the democratic rights they were promised, they were guaranteed by us and the rest of the world. Does he speak out for human rights and stand for the people in Hong Kong or the Uyghurs who are in re-education camps? No. In fact, he promises to stay silent. Trump and his emissaries have sought repeatedly to extort the existential fears of Ukrainian leaders for political advantage, holding up political support of vitally needed military aid to pressure Ukraine at a time when he's engaged, it's engaged in a live war with Russia. Most people don't realize in the Donbass in the West, there's a war going on now. A war that's costing thousands of Ukrainian lives. This isn't a game. It's deadly serious. The United States cannot afford to have a president who will abuse whatever power is available to him to get reelected. That's what it's all about. And here's the kicker. The people around the president knew that what he was doing was wrong, profoundly wrong. So what did they try to do? They tried to cover it up by hiding the evidence classifying it like no other president attempt to classify these conversations. We not only know about this thanks to the courageous actions of a whistleblower who has since been joined by others stepping up to protect our country. Trump's scheme has been exposed. Look, folks, Trump did it because like every bully I've ever known or every bully we've read about in history, he's basically a coward. He's afraid. He's afraid. <clears throat> He's afraid about just how badly I will beat him next November. Folks, he's targeted me and my family with lies and distortions and smears. And that's all they are. Because he thinks he will undermine my candidacy for the nomination as well as the presidency if I'm the nominee. He's just flat doing what he's always done, lying. Even though the mainstream has called him out for his lies. Do you ever recall a reporter, a mainstream reporter, while the president is speaking? Interrupting saying, he's lying? Maybe. I don't remember. And he's spending tens of millions of dollars this early in the campaign to engage in the Democratic primary to spread lies. He's trying to orchestrate a campaign where truth and the facts are irrelevant. In Goebbels' terms, you say it long enough, often enough, people may believe it. And his line is matched only by his manifest incompetence oh. as president. <clears throat> I believe at the outset of my announcing 
that there would be no level to which he will not stoop. He's insinuated that people who spoke to the whistleblower should be executed. Here's what Trump said in a closed door meeting <clears throat> with US diplomats, quote, I want to know who's the person, who's the person who gave the whistleblower the information because that's close to a spy, I'm still quoting. You know what used to do, we used to do in the old days when we were smart, right? I'm still quoting, right? Spies and treason. We used to handle it a little differently than we do now. <clears throat> what president has ever used such language? I mean, think about this. What president has ever used such language? And now, allegedly, I don't know for a fact, the whistleblowers are worried about their safety, thanks to our president? Shameful. Trump, it is shameful. He has no shame, though. <laughs> Trump even dared to say <clears throat> that if he was removed from office, quote, I shouldn't say quote, I'm not positive of the quote. I'll be very precise. That it will spark a civil war. Wow. Right-wing media outlets are full of... <laughs> Right-wing me media outlets are full of baseless conspiracy theories. And the darkest reaches of the internet are washed with those vile attacks. And he's spending millions of dollars right now, right now, of campaign money from his special interest groups who hate me and most Democrats to spread his lies. And that's what they are, they're lies. There is no truth in his charges and attacks against me and my son, zero. Every independent news organization that's reviewed his charges at length found them to be flat out lies. And Trump knows it. But the old method he has used very well since he was a businessman. Repeat, repeat, repeat the lie. My insistence that a prosecutor who was viewed as corrupt be replaced was the official position of the President of the United States, the United States government, supported by Republican senators who sent a letter, sent a letter in 2016, calling for the removal of Shokin because of corruption. Supported by the European Union, the International Monetary Fund, our allies, including the UK, France, Germany. What Trump did in Ukraine was to carry out a secret policy for his own personal political benefit in the hope that he wouldn't have to face me and my guess is anyone else who he thought was likely to win. What I did was to seek to replace a weak prosecutor with one who we hope would go after corruption that is holding Ukraine back. The rest of the world was threatening not to continue to support Ukraine unless they dealt with the corruption. What Trump did was hold hostage political support and hundreds of millions of desperately needed dollars to a country at war to advance his own political demands. If they had been written as a sitcom, it wouldn't have been believed. I mean, think about this. And now there's a report that not only did Trump send Rudy Giuliani, a man of great integrity, <laughs> his personal lawyer to carry out his scheme and co-opt the State Department. It's been alleged that the allies of Giuliani were working on a side deal at the same time to make millions in Ukraine. Just been alleged, I don't know for a fact. A corrupt scheme with an additional helping of corruption and self-dealing on the side. Classic Trump. Look, the abuse of power is a defining characteristic of Trump's presidency. He acts 
he reacts. He twists, he turns according to what he thinks is good for him, for his ego, for personal politics, for campaign money. Virtually every day he launches a barrage of tweets to disparage, insult, threaten anyone, anyone who not only criticizes him but doesn't bathe him in praise. No, think about it. You ever think you see a cabinet meeting and say, yes, Mr. President, you're the greatest person in the world? <laughs> I mean, think about it. I mean, they, we've become so inured by this ridiculousness. But anyone who challenges his, outra uh, his outrageous behavior, behavior that's beneath any president at any time, under any circumstances, think about the way he tweets and talks about women of color who dare to speak their minds against him and happen to be city members of Congress. Think about the way he turned on the FBI and America's intelligence services, who were just pointing out to him that Russia and Putin were directly engaging and trying to deal with our sovereignty by engaging in our electoral process. Nobody, nobody doubts it. Yet on the world stage, he dissed them and said, I believe Putin. He's repeatedly demonstrated his desire to advance his own personal gain ahead of the public good. And know that he will do anything, anything it takes to stay in power, to protect himself. Because he knows out of power, he may be a lot more vulnerable. We need to be clear about something. This isn't just an academic exercise in political theory. A president? who puts his own self-interest ahead of the public good and national security, also poses a threat to each and every American in our daily lives. He's already threatened a whistleblower and anyone who talks to the whistleblower. Now we hear reports that additional whistleblowers are coming forward. I don't know it for a fact, I just know what you know. Some with information about how he was pressuring Ukraine. Others with respect to pressure he may have put on the IRS about his taxes. And by the way, even Nixon released his taxes. <laughs> Where are his taxes? What's he hiding? What's he afraid of? What's buried in those returns? Why can't the American people see them? Why can't he release them? I've released 21 years of my tax returns. Every penny I've made is there for the public to see. And Trump, it's all hidden. Why? Why? Well, he's proven he'll use the Justice Department against anyone he believes threatens his power, his ability to stay in office. Now the Justice Department is is intervening on Trump's behalf in his personal lawsuit to hide his finances from the public eye. Trump has proven that he'll use the State Department against anyone who believes, he believes, threatens his power or his ability to stay in office. He will order the removal of career diplomats who won't carry out his whims without question. Does anyone doubt he would use any other part of the government, any other power available to him as president to destroy anyone he believes threatens his ability to stay in power and stay behind the veil, the ability to stay in office. When I announced my candidacy, and I did it here as well, I said I was running in order to restore the soul of America. It was not hyperbole. And it wasn't just what we saw in Charlottesville, Virginia, people coming out of the woods and fields, carrying torches, chanting anti-Semitic bile, accompanied by white supremacists and the Ku Klux Klan. It's been repeated and repeated and repeated. So folks, restoring the soul of America, that's what's at stake in 2020. 
That's why this election is so important. It's why we're not going to let Donald Trump pick the Democratic nominee for president, period. I'm not going to let him get away with it. He's picked, he's picked the fight with the wrong guy. <laughs> I'm not going to be distracted by all his lies, his smears, his distortion. People know, everybody knows who Donald Trump is. They know me as well. None of these attacks are true, and I'm going to stay focused on your lives. That's what this election is about, you, not me. It's about you. It's about your family. It's about your children. It's about your grandchildren. And you can't wait. You can't wait for affordable health care. You can't wait to get paid a decent wage in the job you have. You can't wait to have access to education. You can't wait for us to do something rational about guns. You can't wait for us to take on what is happening to our climate and is an existential threat to the world. You can't wait. And the world can't wait for America once again to lead a stable, peaceful international order. Without us, we're all in trouble. The world's in trouble. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Like JFK said when he spoke about taking America to the moon, he said, I am willing to postpone the work that has to be done for you, for America. Our possibilities are limitless, but it takes vision. And yes, it takes plans, but that's not enough. It takes a proven ability to get big things done. And no one in this race has had a stronger record of passing important, consequential pieces of legislation than I have, or promoting them when I was vice president. From the Voting Rights Act renewal, to the ban on assault weapons, to the Violence Against Women Act, the Obamacare, to the Recovery Act, which kept us from sliding into a depression. I've been there. I know what it takes to get these things done. So let me finish with this. A lot of my primary opponents, and they're good people, we have to say we have to do more than just defeat Donald Trump. I agree. We have to do more than beat Donald Trump. We have to beat him like a drum. <laughs> That's what we have to do. Thank you for listening. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. Thank you, thank you, thank you.